I cry out to the Lord. I plead for the Lord's mercy. I pour out my complaints before him and tell him all my troubles. When I am overwhelmed, you alone know the way I should turn. Wherever I go, my enemies have set traps for me. I look for someone to come and help me, but no one hears me and asks me a lot. No one will help me. No one hears the bit that happens to me. Then I pray to you, O Lord. I say, you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want in life. Hear my cry, for I am very little. Rescue me. Bring me out of prison so I can thank you. The godly will crowd around me, for you are good to me. All right, well, we're finishing up our series on prayer, and we're going to talk about uh, something can be a bit controversial in churches, depending upon their traditions. So um, let me just do a greeting for you. Aura machi, wohotusen, yafre, yafre wosen, yafre me, afia mary. Now, in the event that you did not recognize that language, that is the Chi dialect of the Ashanti tribe of the country of Africa, of Ghana, West Africa, uh, where I lived thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago when dinosaurs were still on the, on the land. There was a typical morning greeting where you might encounter someone, especially an elder, and you would inquire about their well-being. Wohotase, madame, how are you, my friend? And uh, then you might uh, ask them their name, Yafre Wose. And then you would say your name, Yafre Me Afia Mary. In Ghana, in West Africa, they have day names. So the day that you're born, uh, I was born on a Friday. Uh, the um, Ashanti word for that, uh, the Chi word for that is uh, Afia in the feminine. In the feminine. So um, I would be Afia Mary. If you were a man, you were Kofi. Kofi, if you were, so Buck, if you were, if you were born on a Friday, you'd be Kofi Buck. How about that? All right. So, now if you didn't know the language like this one, a particularly unique dialect of a, a tribe from a small country halfway around the world, uh, when it's spoken, it sounds pretty strange to your ear, to say the least. But to those who speak it uh, and use it, well, of course, that's their primary uh, tool of verbal communication. So we're going to talk about something called the gift of tongues. It's a spiritual gift. And so we're going to begin with our text. But before we go there, let me just set it up for you. This particular portion of scripture, which is written by Luke, the book of Acts, is talking about the great uh, Jewish festival of Pentecost. Uh, and it's being celebrated in the city of Jerusalem, which had become really a melting pot of sort with folks living there from all places all over. So people had migrated from Egypt and different parts of Asia and Rome and Judea. So you had a lot of different people groups um, in Jerusalem. Anyway, these different people groups had gathered together for this particular special holiday known as Pentecost. It takes place just 10 days after Jesus has ascended into heaven to take his place at the right hand of the Father. Now remember, he spent 40 days following his resurrection from the dead on Easter Sunday, still kind of hanging around the area with his friends, his disciples. The word says that he made appearances here and there to over 500 people. 500 people could attest to the fact that they saw him alive after he supposedly died on the cross of Calvary. And so Pentecost comes 
50 days after Easter. And so here's where we have our text. We have all new believers. 10 days after Jesus has left them, they're gathered together in one place when something extraordinary takes place. So here's what it says. On the day of Pentecost, Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, they were devout Jews, Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Okay, so remember before Jesus ascended into heaven, he had promised his followers that he was going to send them the Father's gift, and the Father's gift is the Holy Spirit. And he said further that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive power. And so that's exactly what's happened here. They have become filled with the Holy Spirit and they've received some special power. And the first manifestation of this power was this extraordinary spiritual gift of speaking in another language unknown to them. So if you would take out your handouts here, just before we go any further, let's be very clear about the answer to this question. Where do spiritual gifts come from? Whatever it is, whether it's tongues or some other spiritual gift, where do they come from? Well, all of the spiritual gifts described in Scripture come directly from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the giver of all spiritual gifts. Paul says this to the church in Corinth, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, is the source of them all. To be clear, the Spirit referenced here is the Holy Spirit. So we're not talking about some crazy, wild force to be feared or doubted or scrutinized. No, this is the Holy Spirit. This is God who gives this gift and all other gifts. So this gift, along with all the others, is something to be cherished. It's something to be desired, not something that you should fear or scoff or reject out of hand. Uh, so if you want to read about any of the other uh, spiritual gifts, you can just go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and Paul outlines several others there. But let's uh, start at the beginning with the very simple question is, what is the gift of tongues? Well, it is the supernatural, the supernatural ability to speak in a language that you have never learned. It's the supernatural ability to speak in a language that you have never been taught. The Apostle Paul mentions this gift. He says, still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages. Well, what exactly does that mean, an unknown language? That begs the question, is it a known language? Like, does someone speak it somewhere in the world? And the answer is, maybe. Now that sounds like a good lawyer, politician kind of answer, doesn't it? Yeah. But check this out. Just at verses 5 and 6, I'm going to read it from a different translation. It says, Many religious Jews from every country in the world were living in Jerusalem, and when they heard this noise, a crowd gathered. But they were surprised because they were hearing everything in their own languages. So what exactly happened here? The believers who are from Galilee, a lot of regular guys, guys with no formal, real formal education, including the disciples Peter, James, and John, 
who the Bible says were largely uneducated men, great fishermen, but not schooled in formal education, and women, including women who never had the opportunity back in the day for any kind of education of any kind, all of a sudden, these uneducated people start bursting out talking in foreign languages that were known to the people around them who had gathered from other places, but were unknown to the believers themselves who were speaking them, who'd never been taught them or learned them. So in that instance, this gift, this gift of tongues, uh, includes real, known, understandable foreign languages given to those who'd never learned or studied them before, just like I was speaking to you in Tri. That was a language that I learned. Um, I can basically say, you know, hi, how are you? How old are you? What's your name? And I want to go buy an egg. That's basically what I remember. Oh, yeah, and give me a towel. I don't know why I remember that, but anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, but there's another aspect of speaking in tongues in a different kind of language other than those that are known to people within the world. Here's what Paul says. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. So here, he makes it clear that in addition to languages that are known, like French and German and Chi and, you know, Portuguese, Spanish, whatever, English, in addition to those languages, there is also this unknown language, which is referred to an angelic language or a heavenly language that only the angels and the Lord speaks. Only the angels and the Lord understands this part of the gift of speaking in tongues. So you might receive, if you ask for the gift, you might receive a, a, a language totally unknown to you, but maybe spoken somewhere, some, somewhere in the world. Or you might just as likely receive a language that's only known to God and to the angels. Now, if you don't even know what you're saying, and no one around you knows what you're saying, I think it's a fair question to ask, what in the world is the purpose of speaking in tongues? What's the point? Well, the most important use, and this is on your handout, the most important use and value is in your private devotions, in your private prayer time. Paul writes again, a person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally, but one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. So the gift of tongues is really just a form of prayer, praying in the spirit, and what does the Bible say? It says, pray always, pray without ceasing, and pray in the Spirit. So it's another kind of prayer, just like we talked about elements of prayer that we looked at last week when we talked about the Lord's Prayer. Praying in tongues is just another kind of prayer offered to, to God in a language that he and the angels understand. But before we get to the how, this gift can strengthen you personally in your prayer life. Let's quickly address this whole reference to prophecy in the verse. So there are occasions when someone who has the gift of speaking in tongues is called by the Lord to give a message to the church. So let's say someone was given a message to speak in tongues and deliver it here in this church. The purpose of bringing a word from God to his body of believers is to allow that person to know what God is, is saying. But any time, please hear this, any time it is done in a public corporate setting like a church service, like we have right here, right now, any time it's used in that regard, it should be interpreted. In other words, it should be 
explain what is saying because otherwise if someone just starts talking in tongues and you don't understand them and they just get up and you know let's say sherry just got up and she started speaking in tongues what's going to happen we're all going to be confused it's going to cause all kinds of confusion and uh and concern and god is a god of of peace and not chaos he is god of order and not confusion now i don't know I don't know if I've ever met anyone who has the gift of interpretation. So rarely, rarely have I ever been in a service. I might have one or once or twice been in a service where someone spoke in tongues and then had it interpreted to the whole, to the whole body. But how does praying in a, in a language you don't understand help you? Well, it brings you into a glorious new dimension in prayer. You know, you're now operating, you're speaking, you're praying in a spiritual realm. God understands every word because the new language is a gift from him to help you communicate directly with him. Remember when we started this series, if you were here, and I began by asking by a show of hands, how many of you would like to jumpstart your prayer life? And uh, I remember looking around the room and almost everybody's hand went up. Because the truth is we can always be improving upon our communication skills and our prayer time with God. So think about this. Can you think of some adjectives to describe God or some titles that you would describe to God or to Jesus? Just what are some adjectives or titles that you might use? Just yell them out. Crickets? Loving. Loving. Thank you, Julie. Somebody else? Graceful. Graceful. Thank you. Forgiving. Forgiving. Absolutely. Yes. So here's the thing. An average educated person, the average educated person, knows about 20,000 words. We use only about 10% of that. 10% of that, about 2,000 words we will use in a week. You're all thinking, you use 2,000 words on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Keep that to yourself, people. But when we're trying to describe the God of the universe, the indescribable, almighty God, the great I am, you will eventually run out of words you know because the languages we know, the language that we've been taught, well, that language is limited in nature. And so praying in tongues in a heavenly language frees up your mind so that you can pray more. So there are two times that I typically will pray in this um, gift, and I have received this gift. Um, one is, you know, have you ever been in a situation that was so difficult, so hard, so sad, so burdensome, so confusing that you just didn't know the words of what to say or pray. You were without words, but yet your spirit was so heavy and you felt under great pressure. That's an especially wonderful time, especially wonderful time to pray in the spirit to God in the, in the language of tongues, in a heavenly language. Uh, Nikki Gumbel, who is the um, author of the um, Alpha Course, wrote a book and uh, entitled The Holy Spirit, and here's what he says. It can be a great help when praying under pressure. There are times in our lives when it's hard to know exactly how to pray. It can be because we're burdened by many pressures, anxieties, or griefs. And then he goes on to say, he said, not long ago I prayed for a man aged 26 whose wife had died of cancer after only one year of married life. He asked for it, instantly received the gift of tongues, and all the things 
that he had pushed down in his life seemed to just pour out of him. He told me afterwards what a relief it had been to be able to unburden all those things. And then he went on to say this, many people have found the gift a help in praying for other people. It is hard to pray for others, especially if you have not seen them or heard from them in some time. After a while, Lord bless them might be the most elaborate prayer. It can be a real help to start praying in tongues for them. Often as we do that, God gives us the words to pray in English. So first and foremost, speaking in tongues, praying in a heavenly language or a language unknown to you or to those around you, helps us, helps you in your personal prayer time. But there's another uh, reason, and that's also on your handout here, another purpose of speaking or uh, singing in tongues, and that is to express adoration and offer praise to God. In Acts chapter 10, Peter is preaching in the home of a Roman officer by the name of uh, Cornelius. Cornelius was a believer. And there were several uh, Gentiles, meaning non-Jewish people there. And the text tells us this. It says, even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. So they're praising God in a heavenly language in that instance. And then Paul addresses this notion of praying and singing in tongues. He says, for if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying, but I don't understand what I'm saying. Well, then what shall I do? He says, I will pray in the spirit, and I will also pray in words I understand. I will sing in the spirit, and I will also sing in words I understand. So I often pray in tongues. I love to uh, sing in tongues. Um, fortunately, I'm usually by myself when that's happening. So, you know, only just, you know, my cat is the one that's... <laughs> but... I love to do it for those two very extreme emotions. When I'm overburdened for someone or for a situation, or more common for me is when I am just, you know, I just am so in awe of God and what he's done in my life and what he's done in the lives of people that I love and that I just want to express adoration to him. And I'll, I'll often actually pray it to the tune of a, of a hymn that I might like, like How Great Thou Art or Blessed Assurance or whatever. But anyway, you can do whatever, but that's what I do. Anyway, so when it comes to speaking in tongues, it's a gift from God. It's not to be forbidden, but by the same token, I want you also to hear this. Its importance should not be exaggerated. You don't have to go brag about it or suggest to someone that if they hadn't received this gift, they're any less spirit-filled or less of a Christian, or that somehow it's a condition of your salvation. It is not. Trusting faith in Jesus Christ is the only condition of salvation. But I've, ha I've seen and I've had people spiritually bully others. You know, you must receive this gift. You must have this gift to be born again. That is not true. But by the same token, I encourage you to ask for it because it's pretty amazing. And it can change your prayer life. So, to do that, you can just pray. So here's a, a prayer that you might consider praying just in your own language, but something like, Father, fill me with love for you and a desire to praise you. In Jesus' name, stir up the Holy Spirit in me to pray another language. Remove all obstacles in the way of receiving this gift. Thank you. Amen. So you can just pray for that. And remember, the word says that 
you don't have because you don't ask. But it also says if you don't get it right away, like the guy that was praying with Nikki Gumbel, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on persevering. So I'm going to read something to you from a um, good Lutheran pastor who's gone home to glory. He wrote this book, The Gift of Tongues, by Larry Christian, a fellow by the name of Larry Christensen. Here's what he says. In order to speak in tongues, you must you have to quit praying in English. After you've come to the Lord with your prayers and petitions in English, you simply lapse into silence and resolve to speak not a syllable of any language you've ever learned. Your thoughts are focused on Christ, and then you simply lift up your voice and speak out confidently in the faith that the Lord will... Take the sound you give him and shape it into a language. You take no thought of what you're saying. As far as you are concerned, it is a series of sounds, and the first sounds will sound strange and unusual to your ear, and they may be halting and inarticulate. He says, have you ever heard a baby learning to talk? You may even have the thought that you're making it up. But as you continue to speak and the lips and tongue begin to move more freely, the spirit will begin to shape a beautiful language of prayer and praise. And then he goes on to say this, and this is really important. He says, the devil will be right at hand to challenge your experience, telling you that you made it all up or that it sounds foolish and crazy. Every person I have talked with who has spoken in tongues witnesses to the same experience, the temptation to draw back, to deny the experience. But as you continue in faith, the Lord will give you freedom and confidence in your new tongue. Every day you must use this in your private devotions. So, you know, in other words, if you don't use it, you lose it. So when you're first beginning to use this gift, you want to practice it day after day after day so that you become comfortable in it. And then he says, after several months, when the fruits begin to show, you will know without any doubt what a wonderful blessing the Lord has given to you. I do not know one person who, upon learn, learning the, receiving this gift and using it, doesn't say about the first experiences that they had that they felt foolish and thought they were just making it up. So if that happens to you, don't pull back, just press on. So um, here's what I suggest you do. Do this sometime when you're alone, you know, so that you're not so self-conscious by others looking at you or like wondering if you're having a stroke. You know, maybe you're in your car or whenever, or you're outside or whatever and nobody's about, but try it. Start to make a sound. Don't do it in English. Try to just make a sound and ask the Lord to give you this angelic language. And if you don't get it right away, you keep on asking. Now, if I were going to be here uh, after service, uh, I would... Uh, I would model it for you if you would like me to, but I'm not, I'm not here after service. I have to, like I said, I have to book to Bethany. But, uh, I, and I don't do it in a public setting like this because, as we said, that's not really what it's about. But anytime afterwards, and I'll be here, I'll be here another Sunday for sure. I'll be here at least a few more Sundays. No, I'm coming. I'll be here. And uh, anytime you do want to ask me about it or you want to listen, and or sit with me and and uh, we try and and see if uh, pray and see if you might receive that gift have at it because like I said for me man it is one of my most favorite ways to pray to God who is indescribably good who is indescribably good and how wonderful to pray in a language that only he and the angels understand amen all right, well, let's sing Holy Spirit. <laughs> 